Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic. And today I'm here to talk about Season 3, Episode 3 of Hulu's Only Murders in the Building entitled Grab Your Hankies. So this episode title revolves around Charles' goal of getting everyone to basically turn in their handkerchiefs, the handkerchiefs that Ben gave them for the play, since him and Mabel suspect that Ben grabbed the handkerchief that he was holding in his hand when he died off of his killer. Now as I said last week, uh, this show likes to kind of point the finger at a person each week, but that didn't feel like the goal of this episode. Um, yes, by the end, they did try to suggest that Kimber may have done it since she doesn't have her handkerchief, but I don't even really think we're meant to take that seriously. No, I think the main focus of this episode was around Oliver's, I think, self-doubt surrounding his ability to produce a play that will reflect well on him. Like, this is what he considers to be his strong suit, so he has to live up to like all of his talk and his reputation and everything that he's done in the past. Like, <laughs> like when he would say when he won his Tony and he was like, yeah, Tony's my dog that I named, <laughs> I named him Tony on purpose to be confusing. <laughs> um, you also see that Mabel and Tobert, I believe I actually misheard the line where he said his name last week and I called him Robert. But no, it's Robert with a T, Tobert. I thought Ben was saying his name wrong last week and he was correcting him. But anyway... We see Mabel and Tobert start to develop something of a romantic connection. Uh, we see this with Oliver and Loretta as well. And this makes sense because they both would have they would both have something of a chip on their shoulder, right? That could be something they could connect on. Like Loretta, Loretta is still trying to make a name for herself, and Oliver is trying to remake a name for himself as well. Especially after the convo he had with that critic last week who said that the play sucked. So all that to say... I'm finding the character-based stuff to be a, actually a tad bit more compelling than I have in previous seasons. Uh, couple that with this episode being, I think, particularly funny. And yeah, this season's off to a really strong start, you guys. Um, but I, I, I truly enjoy this show anyway. Like, they have to fundamentally change what it is for me to stop liking it. Because I like the characters, I like the structure of the show. Like, they could do this show for another couple seasons and I wouldn't get tired of it. So yeah, I, I'm kind of prone to liking these episodes anyway. So uh, let's get started. With Ben dead and his show currently getting a, a 10 count from the referee, Oliver decides he wants to turn Death Rattle into a musical and he needs to sell that idea to Donna and Cliff in between their uh, makeout sessions. I loved Howard's recommendation of his friend at State Farm and how Oliver reacted when he said bam. Like he shouted bam and then H Oliver's like, he jumped, but then there was kind of just like a, uh, like, <laughs> I can't believe this is even happening. <laughs> like how I even said something like, you remember how would I tell a story? <laughs> And I tell a story has like recognizable names at a point. <laughs> that was a, a great line. Howard, I mean, I'm sorry. Oliver had a great episode this week, man. He was really good. And then the callback to the the State Farm thing later when, <laughs> when Howard's having, I mean, I'm sorry, Oliver's having that fit in the bathroom and he comes out and Howard sings the jingle. Like, I get really good stuff, man. It's a really funny episode. Uh, but Mabel and Charles decide that Mabel is going to investigate Ben's apartment 
and that Charles is going to find out who's missing a hanky. And uh, I also, I love Mabel's impersonation of uh, Oliver. I keep calling Oliver Howard, like, or starting to anyway. But her imperson impersonation of Oliver in that scene, where he's like, yeah, it needs to be something that's kind of insulting. He's like, everything you just did, don't do that, or something to that effect. Um, that was a great uh, moment as well. But this led to a bit that they did this entire episode with Charles clumsily trying to get everyone to produce their hankies. And... I felt like they started off with the best one. Like when, <laughs> when Charles lays out the plan, he's like, "What if we all, <laughs> what if we all found our hankies and everyone just showed them to me?" <laughs> like that is, like that's his plan. His plan. Like I love. He's like, like before he leaves, he's like, "Yeah, what, I'm gonna do something way better than th thank you for a hanky." And that was not way better than thank you for a hanky. Thank you for a hanky would have been better than <laughs> what if we all just found our hankies and everyone showed them to me. <laughs> But um, yeah, they 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 did a good job with uh with with uh, Charles' attempts to get the hankies. Uh, like, but like everything else, like the quilt, all that, none of that was as good as everyone just showed them to me. <laughs> um, but this ultimately leads to what I said up top. Uh, Kimber is unable to produce her hanky after a sequence in which we see her singing with Loretta and narrating about taking someone out who is outshining you. But obviously, Kimber didn't kill Ben, so I'm not even going to spend time discussing that. I just don't believe that's the case. I don't even think they really put a good effort into making me think that was the case. And of course, we're not going to find the killer in episode three. It's just like uh, <laughs> like, like Charles said last week, Like usually it takes eight episodes. So um, I'm throwing Kimber, Kimber out. You know, I don't, I don't believe it. I don't know why I did both shoulders. That's me throwing it out like in the trash behind my head. I don't know why I did both shoulders or why I did... Did it so many times. Uh, but back to Oliver. So the play is now called Death Rattle Dazzle. And Donna tells him that he has to have a showstopper song in it. And he's looking for Loretta, who's late. And when she arrives, she tells him that Ben's brother, Dickie, is now her manager. And that she has an audition for a role on a spinoff of Grey's Anatomy. And I'm just going to pause right here. Is there anything Meryl Streep can't do? Like, seriously. Like, I, I, like why the fuck is she so good at acting? <laughs> Like, it makes no sense. Like, she is the Jordan of acting. Like, in this scene, she talks about being involved in the workshopping of Little Shop of Horrors. And on paper, it's not even the greatest line, but the way she delivers the line that, like, it used to be, it used to be called Eat Me Seabor or something like that. Like, that was a hilarious line. And then when she's rehearsing, and she comes, <laughs> when they're rehearsing, they come on, she comes on that goddamn lantern, and it's like, it bumps her in the head and shit. I'm just like, man, her comedic timing is so good. And yeah, I already knew she could be funny, but this is a unique character for her. And, and man, she's just crushing the fuck out of this role, man. So man, anyway, uh, Dickie tells Loretta that she got the role on the Grey's Anatomy spinoff, but it conflicts with the play. And there's a great scene here where, uh, despite how great the two of them have been together, Oliver really, really cruelly tells Loretta that she's under contract as a way of saying, like, you can't do this show because you are under contract and obligated to perform for me. And it's a really shitty scene. Oliver comes off really shitty in it. And then right after he goes, fuck. And you're just like, okay, one, I feel like I've... I'm not sure how many times I've heard Martin Short say fuck, but it's probably less than five. <laughs> and yeah, and, and it was a it was an accurate response for him being that shitty in that moment, which kind of betrays who he is as a person. So, um, man, that was a really great scene. Uh, and he apologizes legit like two scenes later. <laughs> and he says he won't enforce the contract, but he wants Loretta to sing the lullaby for Donna and Cliff and for the cast and crew to help sell everybody on the musical. And it is, of course, outstanding because that's the only kind of performance that Meryl Streep can give. And it sets up this maybe Kimber did it moment that I mentioned earlier that didn't work for me as far as getting me to see Kimber as a real threat. But the scene works for Cliff as he convinces his mom slash lover to produce the play. Uh, Loretta says she's going to stay on and do the play and her and Oliver kiss. And I'm just all in on this Martin Short and Meryl Streep thing and them doing scenes together. I'm all the way the fuck in. Give me 18 of those every week, and I will love this season. I, I mean, this was a great episode for the both of them. Um, so lastly, we got to talk about Mabel. Uh, she arrives at Ben's apartment, and at the same time as Tobert, uh, they have to hide when Dickie arrives, and we learn that Tobert is there because there's hidden footage uh, from his camera that's in Ben's apartment because Ben took his camera but failed to turn it off. So there's like some time that was some footage that was recorded when uh, no one else was in there and Ben didn't know the camera was recording. Uh, so he's there to get the drive with that film on it. And obviously Mabel is there just to find clues. 
And Tabra tells this story about being in Botswana and filming these animals for this documentary. And talking about this baby elephant, elephant getting stuck in the mud. And he initially says he spent three hours saving it. And I want, I want you guys to think about why in that moment he would lie and then why he later chose to tell the truth when he says that he kept filming and the mother came. And he says, like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to sit in the tree again as it pertains to catching Ben's killer. And I thought that was kind of a weak way to give his character a motivation. But also at the same time, when he lied and he said and he was telling the Botswana story, I don't think that I don't know if she knew about the drive yet, if he had said that he had filmed something yet, but even if he hadn't said it, in, in his mind it wasn't a factor. But when later, when he decides that to tell the truth about not saving the elephant, the drive is now a factor. She has it. She knows it's password protected. She knows what's on it. I don't know. I don't, I don't have it pieced together yet, but it feels like the circumstances surrounding his truth and his lies could play into it's it, as evidence for his motivation in some sort of way. So him and Mabel watch the footage together, and I mean, it's pretty obvious, I think. I, you guys let me know what you think. I think it's pretty obvious that Ben was not talking to a person. He was probably talking to an object or I think a food, a, a, some food. Because um, he says like, he says they're sitting there acting sweet. Uh, he says, I want you, but you'll ruin my career, but I'll love it or so, something to that degree. I, I feel like he's talking like to a slice of cake or something. Like, he's like, oh, I'd love to eat that, but it's going to make me fat and ruin my career. I I'd see you sitting there acting sweet, but you're terrible for me. Like, I don't know. I feel like he's talking to like some food or something, but... I don't think the clues we got this week really help us learn anything further about who the killer may be. I don't buy it's Kimber and the handkerchief. I don't even buy that there was a person in the room with Ben, let alone that that person is the killer. Uh, I think the motivation in killing Ben was to get the play stopped. So whoever did it would be investigated, invested in that play, the play being canceled. So you know, I can see Tobert having some investment in that. Like how crazy would it be if you are a documentary filmmaker you're filming a documentary about an actor, and then that actor is murdered while you were doing the documentary. That would be like the most watched documentary of all time. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like that's motive. Uh, <laughs> so I don't have a ton of theories this week, but I thought the Oliver Loretta stuff was great. Uh, I thought this episode was hilarious. And the only things I didn't really like were the things that I saw as red herrings anyway, like whoever Ben was talking to in that room. So, um, yeah, really funny episode. Uh... Hit me with your theories in the comments if you have them. Let me know what you thought about the comedy in this episode. Let me know what you thought about the kind of, I think, the Kimber theory. If you if you even buy it, let me know what you think about my Tobert theory. And like a good neighbor, I'll be there to reply. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, and until next week, peace.